T.J. Hushmanzada, who's great in the draft, will be joining us in a couple of minutes. Well, Julian Edelman announced his retirement yesterday. And not only was Tom Brady quick to comment, but Bill Belichick also had some very nice complimentary words for the legendary wide receiver. For all Julian did for our team, what I appreciated the most was he was a quintessential throwback player. He could and did everything. Catch, run, throw, block, return, cover, tackle, all with an edge and a competitiveness that would not allow him to fail. It was a privilege to coach him. Wow. Belichick's never said that about another player. Brady rushed out to congratulate him on his career. And yet I turned on the radio yesterday, the rodeo, the radio yesterday, and it was a cacophony of, he's not a Hall of Fame player. Then what is? You got to add context to stuff. Do you know Jason Garrett has a higher winning percentage than Jimmy Johnson, who's the better coach? Wade Phillips, Bill Parcells. Essentially the same winning percentage. But Parcells took over teams that needed to be rebuilt. Wade Phillips, a good man, took over very good teams that were never quite as good as you hoped. Context. Calvin Johnson is a Hall of Famer and should be. Great player. But he retired early because he didn't play in games that mattered. And he was tired of allowing his body to get beaten up. He only has 730 total catches, half of Jerry Rice. Calvin Johnson was so frustrated with his career, he had many good years left. He goes, I'm not playing in games that matter. Edelman conversely played until his body fell apart. If you ask Calvin Johnson today, If he would trade places with Julian Edelman, damn right he would. And if you asked Edelman if he would trade places with Calvin Johnson, he would laugh in your face. Being in games that matter. I love Calvin Johnson, but he's more known for a catch that didn't count. And he retired early. Edelman, for a decade, made more big catches in more big games than any player. Super Bowl MVP. The biggest catch in Super Bowl history versus Atlanta. Second in league history in playoff catches and playoff yards. National TV. Let's add more context. Receivers on bad teams trail with eight minutes to go. And they face prevent defenses and get what I would call junk yards. Julian Edelman didn't get junk yards because the Patriots averaged 12 wins through his career. So what was Edelman doing in the last seven and a half minutes of games? Blocking. Blocking edge rushers and Mike linebackers and Sam linebackers, all bigger than him because the Patriots led and are part of the greatest system ever. And that's what Edelman was always about. Doing whatever it took. Edelman didn't get junkyards. His stats were in the heart, the meat of third downs in the quarters that mattered. A lot of you guys play fantasy football. I don't. But in fantasy football, sometimes receivers on bad teams are better than receivers on good teams because bad teams throw the ball late because they're trailing. Edelman doesn't trail. You have to add context that the Patriots had a system And when you're part of a great system, you have to sacrifice things. Like Manu Ginobili would have averaged 23 a game. But in the Spurs system, he came off the bench and averaged 17 and a half in his prime. He's a Hall of Famer to me. More context. Julian Edelman was always his best in the biggest games. He was the opposite of a stat compiler. Ask yourself this. What are the best friends? The ones that love those free trips to Vegas with you or the ones that show up when you're in the hospital getting a divorce or need to move. There's always the friends, the hangers on who love the free dinners, the parties. They take your call and then disappear when it matters. Edelman is the friend that was biggest when you needed him most. New England doesn't draft wide receivers particularly well. So he never had that superstar number one receiver that got the double coverage. He often got doubled. 
Nothing against Calvin Johnson. But today, if you asked him, would you take 75% of Edelman's career? He would sign up today. I don't think Edelman would take more than 5 10% of Calvin's. He didn't play any games that mattered. Any. What's his biggest catch? And I love Calvin. I met him once. Nicest guy in the world. I mean, nicest pro athlete I've ever met. But baseball's always understood context. Baseball's always understood this. Mariano Rivera only has 82 wins in his career and pitched very few innings. But 100% of writers voted him into the Hall of Fame because when he entered the game, it mattered. He was asked with the burden or responsibility of closing out the greatest franchise in history's World Series and playoff games. He may have thrown nine pitches, but they were the nine most important pitches. Baseball understands this. John Smoltz is a Hall of Famer and should be. John Smoltz played for the Atlanta Braves, pitched forever, and they were great when he played there. And yet he only won 20 games once. How? But John Smoltz in the postseason was a magician. 15-4 and four against powerhouse National League teams, and they couldn't hit him. When you look at what Belichick said yesterday and what Brady was inspired to go to social media to say. I went for a jog yesterday after I read Belichick's press release, calling it a privilege to coach Julian Edelman. And I don't know why, but this quote popped into my head more than once. So I go on a jog, not a run. I don't run fast enough to be called a run. It's a jog. And it just kept coming back to me. Our 35th president, JFK, the late JFK, once inspired a nation saying, ask not what the country can do for you, but what for you can do for the country. Now, Edelman's just a football player, and perhaps he only inspired Patriot Nation, Belichick and Brady. But what made him the quintessential Hall of Famer to me was he never asked what football could do for him. He asked Brady, Belichick, Kraft, and Gronk what he could do for them. That is a winner. That is a friend. That is somebody in a foxhole. You go ahead and win your fantasy league with receivers on bad teams getting junk yards who play on Thanksgiving and always lose and finish in third and fourth place. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Give them the jackets. Give them the gold jackets. But to me, what made Jerry Rice great wasn't just all his catches, but he was unguardable in the biggest games. You got to add context to stuff. What makes a great friend, a great player, a great coach? Jason Garrett's a good coach. Jimmy Johnson's a legend. Jason's got a better win percentage. Wade Phillips is a good man and a good coach. Bill Parcells is a legend. They have essentially the same win percentage. I don't care about innings pitched. When were you asked to pitch? When did you get the ball from Joe Torre? When did Phil Jackson call your number? When were you asked to shoot? Edelman, in the biggest games for a decade, was seemingly always better in the games that mattered most. And so inspired Bill Belichick that Belichick rushed, rushed yesterday to release a statement saying it was an absolute privilege to coach him. To me, that's a Hall of Fame. TJ Hushmanzada now joins us live. 11 years in the NFL. By the way, so Sam Darnold, Christian McCaffrey, come on, tell me, what was it like? Come on, give me a little hint. No. Christian McCaffrey is really good. And I know people know that, but I hadn't seen him in person. The way he runs routes, he's like a receiver. Like it was, it shocked me. And his burst, it almost like he was a rocket. Like somebody put a propeller behind him, a booster, and he just takes off. I mean, I was, I was thoroughly impressed. And, and just the fact that Sam just gets with the Panthers and the best player on the team comes out and works out with him. I expect great things from the both of them. By the way, it's when you get traded or let go by a franchise, you know, Darnold said, 
it stings, right? And I, Joy and I have talked about this. If I got traded to another network, you know, you start to – how do you not lose confidence as a pro athlete when you're traded? It happens, man. It, for, for Sam, it's once he has success, like it, he'll – He'll lose con- every athlete. I don't care who you are. The, the best athletes. Everybody has lost their confidence. And the only way you can get it back is to perform up to your expectation. It's not everybody else's. Ex- it's your expectation. As long as he performs up to his expectations, which I believe are higher than anybody can put on him, he'll be fine. But it's going to take a while for him to get back to the Sam Darnold of USC feeling like I can do whatever, whenever, and however. But with the weapons that he has in Carolina – the Jets are going to look back and say, oh, Sam can really play. We didn't surround him with the guys needed to uh, give him the success that he should have had. Yeah. So um, Mark Sanchez said yesterday he likes that Zach Wilson from BYU is great in chaos. And I said, in life, whatever you're great at, you'll lean into. If you're a, if you have a great singing voice, you'll sing in the car, you'll sing in the shower, you'll join a chorus. You know, we all lean into what we're good at. And I said, what worries me about Zach Wilson, who's better in chaos, so was Brett Favre, is that Brett Favre often leaned into chaos. He didn't want to learn pre-snap. He's like, I'm not going to learn a new offense. I'm going to be a gunslinger. Big Ben's a lot like that. Ben's kind of good in chaos. Ben's never really been a sophisticated pre-snap guy. Is that if you're in chaos too much as a quarterback, then you're not audibling out of it. <laughs> and that's my bigger issue. Peyton Manning wasn't in chaos. When, when, were there players in your career, maybe Ocho was like this, that they actually perform better off script? And how does it land? How does that land for you? And how does it land as a teammate? Out of all the guys that I played with, it would have to be Chad. And Chad was, you didn't want to put Chad in a box, meaning, for instance, I'll give you an example we would install a new play and it would be okay and too high we're going to run it like this when i say two two high safeties so in cover two we want to run a route like this cover four we want to run it this way so that they're both too high but we're going to run the route differently depending on what coverage single high we're going to run the route like this so that's three different ways we can run that route so chad is you just got to let chad be an athlete chad's gonna get open and it might not be what we just talked about. Or too, it was too high, Chad, cover two. The middle of the field was open. He's still going to get open. But if you try to overcoach him, then it can kind of bog down his athleticism and just natural talent taking over. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about Julian Edelman. And, and, and most people think he won't get into the Hall of Fame. But my argument has always been is there's a lot of guys, receivers on bad teams. And they pick up a lot of yards, eight minutes to go against prevent defense. You know, I mean, I like Matt Ryan, but Matt Ryan trails in a lot of games with eight to go. He may pick up 130 yards in the last two drives, and they're meaningless. Edelman, with eight minutes to go, led for a decade. The Patriots led. They won 12, 13 games a year. So he was asked to block. So when you look at Edelman's numbers, they're true numbers. He didn't have junk yards. The, the, the system asked him, return punts, block. But in the biggest spots of his career, he was always better. He was great in Super Bowls, great in playoff games. And I look at him and I think, I know the numbers don't add up, but you're talking about in, in the history of the league, if you said slot receiver, I'd probably be like, yeah, Edelman. That's why, and, and, I, and I view him and I think, I don't care what position you play. If you're a top two or three at a position all time, that feels like a Hall of Famer to me. How do you view Edelman? Not a deep threat. Don't have to double cover him. Probably doesn't have the yards, the touchdowns. How do you view him having played in the NFL? I can't put Julian Edelman in the Hall of Fame. And when he sees me, he's probably going to curse me out for this. And I like him. He's a good player. But he was a role player in that system. Now, let me ask you this question. Would you take Julian Edelman over Wes Welker? Would you take Julian Edelman yes. over Heinz? Or, so, but he couldn't beat out Wes Welker. He was Wes Welker's backup for plenty of for a long time. He couldn't beat Wes out. So they were on the same team, and he backed up Wes Welker. Well, he, could, he couldn't beat him out. Well, he was like a seventh round pick, and then he started returning punts. And then once they saw he could return punts, and Wes Welker was getting beat up on punts, then they let Edelman do more punts. I would argue this: 
that that position, Welker and Edelman, has a lifespan. And the minute they thought Edelman was as good or better, because I think Edelman's better than Welker, then they moved off from him. But it, it did take Edelman, a college quarterback, a while to figure out New England's system. Is that fair? You- 100 percent is fair and and this is how i look at the hall of fame for me personally um this is my are you a hall of famer are you not a hall of famer when you played i don't i don't care like the stats thing that that doesn't matter when you played and somebody says colin joy name the top receivers in the league you'll name 15 maybe 20 guys before you get to julian edelman And, and so name the top quarterbacks in the league Brady, Manny, when they were playing, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees. If you can't, if your name doesn't come up in the discussion, how can you be the Hall of Fame when it is the best of the best? When you say name the top DBs, oh, Dion, Daryl Green, Champ Bailey. If your name cannot be brought into that topic of conversation, that is, you're not a Hall of Famer. Okay, but, Joe oh. Nelson played well in the playoffs, but it's not just the playoff games you have to do. It's a totality of your entire career, not just the playoffs. But if I said to you, best slot receivers ever, because I I look at there's the DeAndre Hopkins on the outside. You want a tall, angular speed receiver. Those guys often don't run as good of routes. On the inside, I need route runners. I need blockers. So I look at him as a top three slot receiver ever. Do you? Yes, Joey Nettleman playing in a slot. Like he he made plays when the catch he made against Atlanta, <laughs> I don't think anybody else makes that catch. That that's going to be an incomplete pass. He made plays when they needed him to make plays. I'm not taking that away from him, but I just always believe, and I and I'll give you a prime like Tory Holt. He's not in the Hall of Fame. Isaac Bruce is not in the Hall of Fame. I believe they'll get in. Reggie Wayne is it in the Hall of Fame? I believe he'll get in. One of the best receivers to ever play football, and, I, and I'll argue with anybody, Chad, he'll never get in the Hall of Fame, and no disrespect, Julian Edelman, he he can't touch Chad when it comes to playing a wide receiver position, not even close. Apples, not even apples to oranges, apples to beans. But Okay, let me throw this out. But Chad didn't run good routes. Chad wasn't oh, always the no, best. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, 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 that's so disrespectful, Colin. <laughs> Chad is one of the best route runners in the history of the NFL. History. Not when he played history. Well, did he block? No, no, all right, all right. <laughs> no. He's not going to block. What, was no. he? Was he easy on quarterbacks, or was he difficult? He was easy on quarterbacks because he created a ton of separation. He was difficult because he would freelance a little too much. All right, a little bit of a freelancer. Well, I'm not. The Hall, yeah. of, the Hall of Fame has freelancers. You can be a freelancer. I'm okay with freelance. I'm not saying. By the way, I'm. I'm just making the argument that I think in sports, when you play for a great organization like Manu Ginobili with the Spurs or Clay Thompson with the Warriors, you sacrifice a lot of stats because you're going to be leading games late. You're going to hit the bench. I mean, when you play with Durant and Steph Curry, they're going to be nice. Clay Thompson takes nine shots. If he played in Charlotte, he'd take 24 and score 32. So I think, you know, we look at Edelman and say he was elevated by the Patriots, and I think, yeah, to some degree, but I also think he didn't get any junkyards because they always led with seven and a half to go, and they just ask him, go block. Greg Jennings said that earlier. He said seven and a half minutes to go when he was in Green Bay, he put his blocking pads on. It's like, all right, guys, my day's done. I'm going to go block. See, now, when you played I mean, Greg Jennings was a hell of a receiver. Will he get to the Hall of Fame? If you ask me who would I take as a receiver, Greg Jennings or Edelman, I'm taking Greg. All right. You don't like short slot guys. That's okay. <laughs> no, I, I want guys I want guys that can get open in any system. Like, if you can run routes and get open in any system, you can play. And that, to, to me, is a good receiver. Can you get in a slot and get open? Can you go outside and get open? And though, to me, that's Hall of Fame. Can, can you do both? It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter what team you're on. Can I put you outside and you run a comeback? Can you run a slant? Can you go in a slot and run a choice and option route? So that that's how I look at things. And the best and the receivers that are T.O., he can do both. Randy Moss couldn't do both, but he was so good at one, it didn't matter. All right, I'm d- I'm done arguing. This was good. Hey, hey, can you do me a favor? I never ask you to do me favors. Can you do me a favor? I got you. I got you. So do you know what the favor is going to be? No, it doesn't matter. What you need? Well, we say hi to Sam Darnold. Did you tell him I said hi? It's funny. We talked about you today. He asked me when I was going on the show, and I said today. He's like, 
Does Colin like me? I said, Sam, shut the you, you know what he likes. You just start clapping. <laughs> so, oh, you, you know what he did say? Wh- what? He said, look how I have my hat. I always wear my hat to the front. True story. <laughs> how about that? He, he said that today. He said that today. <laughs> I love yeah. Sam Darnold more today than any day ever. TJ, you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> TJ. Hey, Joy, no lie. We were sitting there and he was like, I have my hat to the front. And then Josh was like, so do I. <laughs> See, you're just your influence yeah. in the younger generation, Colin. I would love for those guys. If they, if they ever want to sit in this couch, I'll give them the hour. Uh, whatever they want to promote, I'll give them the hour. Josh Allen and Sam Darnold. Uh, I'll let them know. Uh, I'll let them know for sure. All right, buddy. Good seeing you.